Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built, and this week I'm going to continue building the center console for the Alferrari. Alright guys, welcome back, and those watching last week will have seen that I was building the center console for the Al Ferrari, and uh, it's a lot of work, but um, obviously it needs to be custom, I can't use the standard one because it's just not going to fit, and I need to work around the gearbox and all sorts of different things. Uh, if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up and do think about subscribing, it does help the channel out. So one of the questions that I shared with you guys last week was whether I have my stereo down the bottom here or up here. Like I mentioned, these cars didn't come with the stereo, so um, I think I am going to put the uh, the stereo down behind the gear, gear knob. It's just, um, I could use a Bluetooth unit that goes somewhere else, but you still need to have the knob and stuff like that, and I can get a sort of a, uh, similar to what I've got in my 911, is a very classic looking Bluetooth unit. So it looks like an original stereo for the period, but it just uh, does the Bluetooth, and at least it's got the volume control and stuff there, instead of having some weird knob somewhere that doesn't really match anything, or a weird looking controller that doesn't match. Um, so I'll, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, Keep that down here, and I'm going to put my extra two gauges up on the the dash, which are going to be the uh, oil pressure and the um, the oil level. So the oil level for the dry sump tank. Um, I'm going to put up on the dash. Uh, so um, I think we need to get stuck in and work out now how I continue on from what I've done at the back, move it forward, and uh, and get this front half going and make it so that I can actually get it in and out of the car and make it removable. All right, so um, as you saw last week, I built this part of the center console, which is nice and solid and, uh, and fixed and I've got these panels now that sit at the front. Now the seat is all the way back. Normally the seat will be sitting up a bit further forward, but um, it's all gonna be trimmed uh, nicely anyway when it's done. But what I'm gonna have is I'm gonna have these panels on either side be able to unclip and be removed, and then you'll be able to get through to the, uh, the gearbox tunnel, which is under there, um, and keep this top panel here in place the whole time. So you better get in from either side without actually removing the top, without removing the stereo and all the switches and the, the um, you can sort of take the gator off and things like that. You can do that, but not have to remove everything if you want to get into that stuff. And if I make it clip on and off, you, there'll be no visible fasteners. It'll just look nice and neat and tidy and just be trimmed to match. So so now I need a bit of build a frame that these panels can clip into and also hold the sort of structure and hold the uh, um, the the face plate of this center console. All right, so I've got my center console here and I made these fences so that I can actually join up the uh, the front panel sort of like so. So they're actually uh, give the tab to join the two together. And I made some for both sides and I messed up both. On this side, I actually ended up melting the top corner of um, my, uh, my piece that I wanna keep. So I have to repair that. And on this one, I welded it onto the bottom when I should have run it on the top. I had it upside down, I had it in the wrong spot. So I had to cut that one off and uh, yeah, do it again.
right, so you can see I've um, got my clips in now. So I'll just be able to just pluck this off and uh, and leave the center all in place and I'll be able to get in behind. So that uh, I'm very happy with. So I'm gonna make a brace across here next to, uh, to sort of lock these in place and get this all sort of exactly where I want it. And I wanna do another one up here somewhere to uh, also hold it in, have a sort of framework. So I have the uh, the top of the center console in now. That uh, is all. Um, currently, it's just got some couple of self tappers going into my tunnel to hold the uh, the frame in, and I've got the clips that hold it in on the sides. So now each side can be removed separately, and uh, yeah, it's sort of all sort of freestanding, so you can get in and service underneath. But I'm thinking now I'm I actually need uh, some supports along the edge for this framework because when I build the uh, the panel in the middle uh, out of aluminium it's going to have some flex in it because there's nothing sort of supporting it so I might do um, a couple of supports down this side and also along these parts here because particularly when I've got switches and stuff like that when you press onto it it's going to need some support so Well, I have these standoffs welded in all the way down, all the way through the center console, all the way to the back, so that it will support my, uh, my sort of top plate. So now I have to get out my cardboard and cut out a template to fit in that entire section all the way along. All right, that was a whole lot of work. Uh, you probably saw me going uh, in and out of the car a million times trying to get everything just fitting just right. So it's all just sort of sitting in there nicely now. And uh, I have a set of console the whole way through the car that fits nicely. So now we need to go through and uh, start cutting our holes for all our switches and uh, sort of getting the basic layout ready to go, at least as far as uh, we can at this stage. All right, so I've been working on uh, my center console panel and uh, it's starting to look really good. I've got the cutout nice and neat now for the, uh, the gear shift boot for the original one because it sort of looks uh, a nice trimmed panel and keeps it looking original. 
Uh, and I've also done the uh, cup holder spot, which sits in there nicely now. So now it's time to start cutting in my buttons. Now I spent ages trying to find buttons and switches that I really struggled to find things, but I managed to find on, um, actually on, on AliExpress, um, these buttons. So these are a different, a range. Some of these are just uh, momentary and some of them are like the air conditioning uh, latching and they had a bunch of different um, uh, configurations. These will also light up when they're, uh, when they're on. And uh, I got a bunch of different buttons, including I got these ones custom made. So this is actually the, uh, um, the, the Porsche's exhaust symbol. I just got them with open and close so I can hold them down and open or close my uh, exhaust valves. So I'm gonna fit all these into the, uh, the dash. They were actually quite cheap and affordable. Uh, and I needed, I needed multiple way switches for the wipers and um, the, the fan controls. And uh, it didn't really match having the, uh, to be honest, the original Alpha ones sort of looked a little bit, uh, a little bit cheap and nasty. They looked like a bit of an afterthought. Um, so I, I looked around everywhere and what I managed to find was uh, I got some uh, nice knurled dials and, um, some switches, again, I bought a packet of these switches that, uh, that I can uh, set to how many stages I want and, uh, and wire them as I need to, and these go on nicely like that. So it should be a nice, neat, uh, sort of cohesive look to those switches in the center of the car. So uh, now it's time to start drilling them out and fitting them all together and make sure that they actually look like they do the job. I am very happy with that, with this uh, sort of retro style, almost stereo knobs uh, for my switch gear. Uh, that's all looking good. And I've got my, my buttons. So, you know, hazard, uh, washer, and uh, this will be the wipers. This will be the, uh, the fan for the air con and the uh, exhaust opening close. It is looking really good. I am very happy. That is what I was picturing. All right, and how good is that? I am very happy. I've got my, uh, my switches in, they're all looking good, doing the, what they need to do. I've got the buttons all there, all nicely laid out, cup holder. We have a center console ready to be trimmed. Now there's bits and pieces I need to do. I need to actually uh, um, lock this down and uh, I need to make the um, sort of the, the outline for the gator for the handbrake boot and uh, the stereo, which I've still got to get and the sliders, which I've got to get. So uh, there's a few little things to do, but basically we have it all ready to be able to start the trimming process. I will go through what everything's gonna be trimmed like and stuff like that later, but uh, that's looking really good. And now we have a center console, that's fantastic. I'm very happy, but I'm out of time. So I think that means it's time for fun facts with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, the Ferrari F50 GT was produced to compete in the GT1 class of the FIA GT Championship in 1996. It was based on the Ferrari F50 road car and there were only ever three produced. The engine of the F50 GT was based on the F50's naturally aspirated V12 power plant, but it was heavily modified to increase power output. The displacement was increased from 4.7 to 5 litres and it was equipped with a larger intake manifold and fuel injectors and a redesigned exhaust system. These modifications allowed the engine to 
produce a staggering 750 horsepower at 10,500 RPM, making it one of the most powerful Ferrari V12s ever produced. The F50 GT's bodywork featured a more aggressive aerodynamic design for large rear wing and a front splitter to improve high speed stability and improve downforce. Inside, the F50 GT was stripped of all luxuries and amenities to keep the weight low. The seats were replaced by racing seats and the dashboard was simplified to only include the essential gauges. The steering wheel was also replaced with a smaller, more lightweight racing wheel. In testing, the F50 GT lapped the Fiorano test circuit faster than the Ferrari's prototype-built race car, the 333 SP. To put into perspective how blisteringly quick this car was, the Ferrari, 1000 horsepower Ferrari FXXK, set a lap time 3 seconds slower than this car, which was 20 years older as well. Despite its potential, Ferrari cancelled the F50 GT because it was unhappy with the FIA's decision to allow homologation special cars such as the Porsche 911 GT1 in the series. Alright guys, and today we have another episode of Mail Time and uh, we have a letter here from uh, Calgary, Alberta in Canada. Alright, um, hi Jeff, I first discovered your channel when searching for info on painting the car in the garage. Uh, and loved each project you've done. Prior to the Alfa Ferrari, my, his favourite was the Beetle. Um, your honesty and openness when things don't go quite according to plan and things I really appreciate has encouraged me to uh, do the work in my own channel, rebuilding his uh, 1959 Austin Healey Sprite. And he's used a couple of the ideas um, of painting his own car in the garage. And he's looking forward to uh, hearing the Ferrari engine start up. And he's included his, uh, must be his channel. Is uh, a Kono Box Garage sticker, and it's cheers from Ian, Ian Castley in uh, Calgary, Alberta, Canada. So thanks, Ian. And if you guys can hear me above the rain and uh, have anything that you would like to put up on the wall or anything you want to send through, you can send it through to Home Built by Jeff, PO Box 1520, Barrel, New South Wales 2576, Australia. All right, I am. Uh, I'm quite happy with the progress today. I, I'm really happy with how that uh, that centre console's come together. Um, it's a lot of work, uh, you know, <laughs> nutting through things and making sure everything fits and clearances and yeah. But it's uh, oh, it's 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 looking really really good. I'm sorry, we've got hail still coming down. There was a crazy hailstorm just. Just uh, like half an hour like ago. It was like a freak hailstorm. It was, yeah. Well, almost not the size of golf balls, but probably the size of a, like a walnut. Yeah. A hail mixture yeah. of peas and walnuts. Yeah, almost. A couple of them were almost the size of golf balls, but not quite. Not but quite. this, the sheer volume was, was, it was crazy. It was fast and furious. It was. <laughs> <laughs> quite unexpected. It was. Anyway. All right, like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think of everything. Patreon, you know, if you want to follow him a day earlier. And, uh, Stay warm and dry, everybody. Yes, and we'll see you on the next one. All right. Bye. See you guys. The F50 GT. The Ferrari. Hey guys, the Ferrari 50 GT. F50. The Ferrari F50. And the GT1 class of the FIA, FIA GT. <laughs> okay, and the FIA class of the uh, a larger intake manifold and fuel injectors and a redesigned exhaust center. System. So close. <laughs> so close. I said it as I said it, I knew that was not right. Front splitter and a large rear wing to increase downward force and high Down. <laughs> close. That'll do. That is good enough.